We've discovered a large leak in the boat, but we know what to do about it, so we're not too worried. That's not really a leak, it's a water maker. We have the world's cheapest water maker. Well, it'll be a while before we're doing any more Windy Day from Bangor Blogs. If the scenery looks like it's changed, it's because the scenery has changed. This isn't Bangor, this is Carrick. We got out of Bangor just before the lockdown, as you saw in the previous episode, and now we're here in Carrick this morning. Um, the lockdown is in effect, and so Carrick is now locked down. We came this way because my family live on this side of Belfast Lock, not the other side, so it's more convenient to be on this side if we're going to be locked down. But um, I'm just reflecting on the unfairness of it all. <laughs> we enjoyed Bangor, we enjoyed our time there. We liked the staff in the marina, but we had the most horrible weather. <laughs> and that wasn't the marina's fault. I mean, <laughs> they don't dictate the weather, the weather is what the weather is. But we come to Carrick on day one and bang, look at this glorious sunshine. It's like being in the med. <laughs> That just seems so unfair, but we're not going to complain. We've had enough bad weather to last us a lifetime, so hopefully the weather will stay like this and we'll not get any more bad stuff and we're just going to enjoy the sunshine and the warmth and get on with it. Do you know when you have this little fantasy about where you're going to be doing your washing by hand and you think of a some kind of sun-kissed beach and <sighs> you're in your bathing costume and You've got a bucket and all that sort of stuff. <sighs> well, reality is, I've got the bucket, I have got a sun kiss deck, so two out of three isn't bad. But having to do the washing now by hand because everything's closed and we're in Carrie Fergus, we're not in some remote destination. But, do you know what? If life brings you lemon, just make lemonade and get on with it. Well, get on with it then. I will do. Come on, put your back into it. A bit more effort. Make your grandmother proud. Well, she used to use a bucket and a tub and a ringer, didn't she? She did, she did. And I tell you now, if she had a... A little willing helper, she'd be having them out there. She wouldn't be doing it herself, I tell you now. <laughs> so, so this is the point where I usually say it's a windy day from Bangor. Except this isn't Bangor. So it's a windy day in Carrick. <laughs> The location might change, but it seems the weather systems don't. And once again, we have another nice windy day and a storm coming in. Force 8, force 9 gusts. Gives us something to do. We've got the boat all sorted out. She's all got her storm ropes on. She's backed in nice and safe. But uh, what a day. Carrick's a little bit less protected than Bangor. In as much as... Uh, <laughs> in as much as... Um, there's less twists and turns to get here. So as you can see from here, we've got the marina entrance just over my shoulder. And you can see the winds and things coming in and the pontoons are quite bouncy. filming you Beverly so what bits of wood have you got? All right well today's little project is that we're going to continue on with these little bits of wood that we cut the other day and um, we're going to convert them into 
Then again, there might be something else we need to look at. I um, think there's something else we need to look at. We shouldn't have that noise, Bev. No, that pump noise shouldn't be happening. All right, well, we'll put this to the side and we will do plumbing. I hate plumbing. I'd rather fiddle with woodwork, but plumbing's more important. I don't want water in the boat. Well, one thing's certain, we've definitely got too much water in this bilge, Bev. Right. So let's get that out first and then we'll see where the heck it's coming from, love. What, in the middle bills? What do you want? A sponge or a cloth? Um, I'll take the sponge first. Um, but normally we don't get anything in our... In our middle bilge. In our middle bilge, which is why we put the tins there. Yeah, we've just got a tiny bit of water in the middle bilge. But this is where we put our tins. And they're slightly off the floor. Um, so that if we do get water in here, the tins don't get wet. Or at least not wet unless there's absolutely horrendous amount of water. So where you get what we're going to look at first, Bev? Our last repair. Which is <laughs> somewhere in the depths of that. You won't see it very easily, but I will. Oops. And I can pronounce that it's completely dry under there. Oh, well, that's good. So at least the last repair isn't the cause or whatever this is. No, there doesn't seem to be any water running from down in there, to be honest. No, that all looks completely dry back there. There's, n there's no water running in from the back of the boat. Okay, do that again. Yeah. There's no water running in from the back of the boat. Oh, well, that's good to know. So we've just got to find somewhere else where it could be coming from. We're now looking at our next likely cause, but uh, which is the fridge. Uh, but the one good thing about having all this extra storage in bags is um, I could easily remove it and just put it somewhere else for the moment. Here. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is why we think maybe the fridge or something is where the water's coming from. So... It's looking like a prime candidate. Can I have a cloth, please? Yes, of course. Oh, yeah. It's condensation, isn't it? Yeah. It's condensation water. Mm. We used the camera to see hard to access areas and it soon became apparent that the insulation was not covering the cooling pipe for the fridge and water was running down it. The water then ran down the inside of the insulation and collected near the compressor which is why we had a puddle. So the latest plan is to pour some water in here near the um, compressor of all things. And what we want to do is see if that water comes from here and appears in the bilge. If it does, then we can say that the water coming, filling this compartment, is then filling the bilge. Mm. If it doesn't, I've got a compartment to mop out, but it's no big deal. Right, so go, go for it, girl. Go for it. She's pouring that in. Let's see what we're getting in here, if anything. Nothing so far. She's certainly got enough water in there, so if it's yeah. coming from that section, it would be from in there. Yeah. But if it's coming from underneath the fridge, it could come from a different place. Yes. So... Okay, I'm going to just from here. Okay, so what have you found, Bev? I find that it's hard to set up. <laughs> 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 I see it's oh. dishevelled city again. <laughs> well, 
what I find is there is a little bit of damp on top of the beams. Um, you can see with this beam here had a bit of water on it, but mm. I don't know whether it's enough of a leak to transfer the water, whether it's coming under the furniture on top of the beams. I don't know. But if I, if I press down on the flooring, I can see little beads of water pulsing. Pardon me. I don't know whether they're the cause. Oh, so where did it come from, Bev? Just there. Oh, yes. Yeah, so it has. It's fridge water. We're getting fridge water in here. It's okay. It's fridge water by the look of it in there because that's clean water that I just poured in a minute ago. If I had food colouring, I'd put it in and prove the point, but I don't. Um, but almost certainly the water is condensing on the cooling pipes. It's then running down into the compressor department and it's then coming under the cabinetry and into that hole. Right, so at least we found one we find that one, but the thing is, if it's working its way in there, it could be working its way into the main village. Right, okay, well let's sort out those then. Still doesn't answer the thrum noise. I'll insert one here. Here's the thrum noise now. And where that's coming from. So that might be a separate investigation, but at the minute we just find a leak. Well, it's not really a leak, it's a water maker. We have the world's cheapest water maker. <laughs> It does not cost 4,000 quid like all the other water meters. It costs whatever it costs to put the fridge in. And it's dripping water everywhere. And I'm going to patent it. We're going to be rich. <laughs> rich beyond the dreams of avarice. Yachties to come will bless our name. <sighs> well... Uh, we've definitely found one sort of the uh, the water in the build, which is the fridge, um, and the insulation is not perfect around the piping. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the best we can um, with cable ties um, to improve that. We've got water underneath the fridge. No idea what we can do about that. We think that's coming off the actual fridge body, don't we? Just because it's cold. It's just so cold, the fridge, and um, you know, there's a load of water there. Um, but let's just try and tackle one thing at a time. So let's get the insulation on that pipe as best as we can um, and try and remove that out of the uh, leak equation. We've still got the sound so but you've just got to sort of like chip away at these issues um, you, sometimes you can't get a perfect solution it's that simple is one of our subscribers gave us a whole load of cable ties. Trust me, they are getting well used on this project. Whew. Okay, so this is uh, my final... Um, I've wrapped the coil as best as I can. Um, I've added a, a little bit more um, matting and that's allowed me to push the old matting up into near into the fridge area a little bit more it's not tight to the bottom isn't it it's not tight to the bottom so um this is not a perfect solution uh, but beverly and i believe in good solutions not perfect <laughs>